I didn't want to color color the views of people. Wanted to be a bit unbiased, you know. So I took a a break during the course of the election, and by doing so, um, you know, maybe create some level of uh, what should I say uh, balance. If, if, if one can say that, if anything. Uh, so I'll start. Mr. Anderson, how are you? Because are you always Jamaica there? Uh, don't finish up all the, the rum and all those things there. Hope you have been and checked my mother over there well ladies and gentlemen welcome and uh, good afternoon good evening all the way from the UK I took a break I took a deliberate break um, from the live and uh, one of one of, one of the reasons why I took the break from the live was because I wanted to sort of um, let the election blow over you know and uh, just to make sure that um, you know because sometimes when you do live uh, you know you know, you're trying to get everybody, but you know, at the same time, you got a seat. <laughs> if I got a seat, yeah, I got a seat, man. I got a seat. I got a seat right here in my office at home. Right, I got a seat. Um, you know, the election turnout was good, but yeah, I got a seat. Uh, I, th I think, I think the most important thing when one talk about having a seat is that you have to somehow ensure that you create your seat if there's no seat. All right, you've got to create your seat if there's no seat. Don't wait for um to be elected into a seat you you've somehow got to and i say this you've got to you've got to and you've got to um create your seat i hope you I hope you agree with that just starting in a few minutes Uh, please share this page as well. I'd be grateful. Just just press share as you come along. Just press share and share and share and share. Um, that would be good. Let me see something here. That's it. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen. Well, good evening, good afternoon, and. All is well. Hope you're well. I'm coming to you all the way from the UK. Uh, someone said to me a while ago, earlier, I made a post about Donald Trump, and they said, it's good that you're there in the UK and you're not here in the USA. Um, and I'll explain why a bit later. But I uh, just want to say just um, welcome and hope you're well. Welcome to the late one with yourself, Silver. And, uh, you know, the topic tonight is, is I just set the stage really, is the UK election is over. But it is heating up in Trump USA, yeah? UK election is over, but it is heating up with Trump in the USA. Uh, you see, I believe, as usual, I always say politics is crucial and politics is important, you know? And I believe it's, it's crucial that we all engage with the process, whether we like it or not. It's very important to engage with the process. Um, but before I go into that, I want to really applaud Miss Jamaica uh, World, or Miss World, um, Tony and Singh. I mean, everybody, I, I believe, um, should have seen um, th this this lady. Jamaica is a, is a small country in the ge geographical space, sphere on the map, but it is a, it's a it's a powerful country, as she said, little but with Talawa. And uh, many people have been talking about this uh, recent, um, you know, win by Miss Jamaica. 
But what many people have been talking about a lot, it is not just about the win, but it is how Miss Nigeria celebrated for Miss Jamaica. How Miss Nigeria celebrated for Miss Jamaica. And that was a bit which was exciting. Uh, maybe I'll have to do a particular show specifically on your friends and your support. Do they support you really? Do they look out for you? Because when we saw how Miss uh, Miss 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 Nigeria really went out there and just wow, just shout it out and and just got excited for Miss Jamaica. I at one point when I saw it because I just saw a glimpse of it. I I didn't know I don't really watch these Miss World and Miss 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 thing. And I mean, but when I saw that and I saw the clip, I said, "Why is she jumping? Is it was it a Steve Harvey moment whereby somebody made a mistake or what?" But I realized she actually jumped up and really excited for Miss Jamaica that I had to go ahead and do a post. And the post was that, um, do you have a Miss, ja Miss Nigeria in your corner? And are you a Miss Nigeria? Symbolically, uh, figuratively speaking, um, for those who did not understand, they were, they were wondering why, why, why? But it is the way how she supports. So the question is, do you have a Miss Nigeria or in your corner or are you a Miss Nigeria because sometimes in order to get some support sometimes you got to show yourself giving support as well so I just wanted to say that and it was great Miss Universe uh, I believe she didn't come in at all because they said she used Miss Annie Palmer the White Witch of Rosal for those in Jamaica that is something the, 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 the relic of the past the relic of slavery so they said she was voodoo or she was Obi out of it <laughs> and so, so some of some some people say a guy named Dwight Ross, they call her Miss Goody, Miss Goody something like that, Miss Nigeria. So Miss Nigeria, understand, is being invited to Jamaica. So, so that is good. Um, another thing also I just wanted to, to share, and I, and I, and I don't, peep, don't think people um, know about this, but it is something which I spoke about. Uh, you, don't need more, you don't need more Christmas if you're the happiest man ever. <laughs> Come on, uh, Ellen Prison. I, I, I'm always happy. Ellen Prezza. Ellen Prezza say I'm the happiest man of all. I think he's talking because the conservative won. But no, no, I, I'm always happy. And, and everybody knows me. I always say that um, whether it was Corbyn, I, mean, I might get sad for a moment or so, but I'm always happy. You know, there was an election once. It was 1980. I was, um, I was born 1969. So I was about 10 years of age, 11 years of age or so. It was in Jamaica. And the election was uh, between the PNP and the JLP and Michael Manley and Siaga. I was very young, you know, and uh, my family um, was is, is from a, a socialist background, PNP, if anybody knows about that in Jamaica. And I went to bed early and uh, and the election, you know, of course you want PNP to win, you want Michael Manley to win. But, but what happened is this, Siaga won. Edward Siaga won the election. And early in the morning, I, I asked my, my, my sister who won. And she said it was Siaga. And I was gutted. But then I, I, I think from the early days, I came to a point where I started to accept some realities sometimes. And I started to just sing this song in my heart. You know, It was a, a JLP song. And it says, Ada Eddie, our leader, our conscious leader. Ada Eddie, our leader, our conscious leader. It wasn't saying I was supporting of Edward Siaga at that time but it was just simply saying that i was acknowledging that he is a prime minister now and one has actually work with that so so i think deep down in my heart i think I, I i'm a person who can accept things and won't get into the tribalistic mentality but yes i'm happy um but what i wanted to share also is that there's a global jamaica diaspora council election which took place recently by the 15th of december um you may have heard about the this is something by the jamaican government in order to see how there can be some sort of um, synergy or some effective representation in the UK, USA, Canada by Jamaicans overseas. And that election was done recently. There's a registration period and um, the election was completed on the 12th of the 15th of this month. And for the UK, uh, uh, Kevin Brown, Pete, Dr. Kevin Brown was, was elected up north and Nathaniel Pete, you might have known from Safety Box, was up was elected in canada there was a lady named nalia gordon decisio and canada too there was a event blackburn and um in the usa northeast there was a karen dunkley and usa southern there was a dr alan 
Cunningham and USA Wed Miss Wet Midwest. There was a Shauna Chin. Shauna Chin. Is that the lady who was with Gullibop? I don't know. Anyhow, but I don't know. But I don't I don't know. Anyhow, Shauna Chin. So these are the persons who were elected. So anyhow, that's it. so election in the air. But anyway, back to the UK now. Election is over. And I'm happy that it's over more than who won. I'm happy that Boris won, but I'm more happy that it is over. And I tell you why. And everybody who has been following my live for years, and even from the election, you know, in my, in my normal talk show, which is the Silver and Show with Red Chair, uh, I, before the election date for the referendum, all my guests on my show, on the Red Chair, I asked them this question, in or out? You know, out Brexit or or not Brexit, and everybody gave their their views. You know, I've never forget one guest said she wants to be in and remain in because she wants to go to Europe and able to travel and they'll be able to shop. So that was her reason. Many people have their different reasons. So I was asking the question: in or out? The election came, the referendum came, we got the result. It was out. So therefore, well, we're going to the process now of actually having the deal. You know, David Cameron resigned. Theresa May came on, um, the dilly dallying, going back and forth, back and forth. Um, we should have left by this particular time. Then Boris Johnson came in. And for three years, just going over and over, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Dilly dallying, you know. And, um, and all the time on my show, I've always maintained this position that in order for the UK to move forward, we've got to leave. We've got to leave because 17.4 million people voted to leave. And we have got to leave, right? And um, and I maintain that position very consistently. Not being to the fact that I voted Brexit, but being to the fact that if there's a democratic position and the people voted, then we've got to leave, okay? So that was being um, going around in circles, going around in circles, going around in circles, Laws keep passing, frustrating the process to the point where the Prime Minister Boris Johnson said, that's it, that's it. And the Attorney General made this powerful speech when he said, this is a dead parliament whereby it has lost its, um, its, its flavour, it's dead because nothing is going to happen. A hung parliament, the Prime Minister lost his majority, he whipped up all these persons, so therefore they were minus the, the, the Prime Minister uh, Boris Johnson. So he called the election. Right? And it's so funny and interesting that the, the key architect, the persons who were actually frustrating the process and leading on it, they all lost, lost their seat. Dominic Grieve, who was frustrating the process, Prime Minister, good guy, know him very well. He's a mentor of mine. He was one who got me in, um, nurtured me and, and used to go and visit him once a month at the House of Commons, Porculus House. And uh, he lost, lost his seat, he was whipped, you know, he's gone. Anna Subri, if you remember her, she jumped ship from the Labour Party to the new party, independent party. She lost. Chaka Amma from was a safe seat in Streatham. Then he went to this new party. Then he went to the Lib Dem, lost his seat. Sam Gimmer, um, also a progressive young guy, um, black guy, um, had a safe seat, was a junior minister, jumped ship as well, lost his seat. Right? The Joe Swinson, who was the um, leader of the Lib Dem, who said she wanted to be prime minister. She lost her seat and um, she's no more the leader. She's gone out into the deep, okay? The Prime Minister, on the, 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 the mandate and the whole um, essence was, let's get Brexit done, get Brexit done. And it went through and he won, okay? 80. And what people are saying now <clears throat> is that save, <clears throat> save for if it wasn't for the Brexit party, there could be 20 more seats that the, the Conservative possibly could have won. Okay? 20 more seats. Okay? So, therefore, that, that was, that's the situation there. Um, and the good thing about it is that I believe now, and this is it, it's about six to five, if, if, if that's it, six to five black and minority ethnic persons in, the, in, 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 in Westminster. Operation Black Vote made a, made a statement that when they started their mission, with there are four black and minority MPs in Parliament. Now there are six to five. And there's also this new lady, which um, which came on recently from the Thamesmead. She is Abena Opong 
Asare. Okay. So it is interesting days whereby we are seeing new faces. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the late one. I'm Silburn and uh, thank you for coming on. And uh, I'd appreciate if you just share this video as well. I'd love to hear your comments. I believe when I actually come on like this and want to have a discussion, I'm open to discussion. But sometimes I, sometimes I don't have time sometimes to go around in circles on Facebook because sometimes you got to use Facebook. Don't let Facebook use you. You got to decide when is the right time and when you really have time to do that and sometimes i just say now at times i don't have the time to have a discussion uh, and uh whatever my choices are it's my choice um uh, ellen Prezo, before elections you're fuming inside however you're 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 a civil not a procurator before elections you're fuming ah was i fuming mm. but I was, was i fuming ellen Prezo, i was fuming i think i think what made me fume sometime is when I believe that when people are actually saying that uh, 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 why do you vote conservative or why should a, a black person vote conservative? I, I, I think that's something which annoys me a lot. It does annoy me a lot because people believe that just because you're black that you've got to vote Labour. Just because you're black you've got to vote uh, Democrats. You know? And that pre that preconceived notion has got to be shut down, you know. And this is not saying that parties, uh, lib uh, Republican, uh, Democrats, uh, Conservative, Labour are perfect. No, perish your thought. None is perfect. But what is very important is that individuals and hey, hey Mike, how are you doing? <clears throat> individuals have a right, have a right as to who and which party that they choose to vote for. Choosing to vote for a party doesn't mean to say you love the leader. Doesn't mean to say you like everything of the leader. Maybe you like the policies. It could be the policies. Think about that for a second. It could be the policies. Many people like different policies. And that could be what, what makes a fundamental difference. Is it the policies you like while you vote for a party? Right? And I find this very interesting also because I was on the doorstep knocking, not just election, but previous elections, I leave at one time, had my children out there knocking on doors, uh, putting leaflets in. And I always find it very interesting when you find a, a, a black voter or a conservative person, well, a person coming to the door and you assume that they're going to be um, saying that how can you, a black man, vote conservative? And you'll be shocked when they actually say, I'm conservative. And they start to explain why they're conservative. It is not that they're in love with the party. It's not that they're in love with the leader. It's not that they're, they're, they're part of the, um, the membership like I am or, or an activist. But they have fundamental conservative leanings and they do not like um, socialist leaning. So people have their choices. People have their choices as to who they want to vote for. So I always say that uh, black people should not feel like they have got to be whipped. When I say whipped, it is not about the physical whipping. It is just using the same principle that they do in Parliament. If you recall, when, when, when the Prime Minister whipped someone, got three-line whip, whatever, whereby you've got to vote a particular way, right? That is why, and when they say the whip was removed from, from, the, from some members of Parliament, like um, Dominic Grieve and, and, and a bunch of them, Sam Gimmer, that was because they defied the party line on something which is fundamental and crucial so they remove the whip I mean to say they are no more a member of the conservative party and they now become independent that can happen as well with labor party so what so what i'm saying so the whip bit is in now is it is it that as a, as a black person are you whipped whereby you've got to tow a particular line so my friend and myself Juno, we created or we understand that there's something which is called the nlp the NLP, which is called the Nubian Labour Police Force, NLP, whereby you've got to tow in line. So one of the easiest ways how I, how I address this matter now, when persons say, um, how can you, uh, or how, why do you vote for late conservative? Why? How can you? And I said, because it's my choice. It is because it is my decision. And you just can leave it right there. You don't have to go anywhere else. Just leave it right there. It is my choice. It is my decision. You see? 
you got to remember that, and this and this is it. When when you've got your your passport, and when you've got your your birth certificate, there are key names which are in these documents, and those key names which are in these documents are what you are a part of, you know. So therefore, someone don't have the right, don't have the right to challenge the choices that you make in life. I was going to say, unless they are paying your bill or unless they contributed to your life. But even so, no, no one has that right. No one has that right. And so therefore, I'm on a quest as well. And one of the things that I do is try to encourage persons to, I, to understand who they are. Having their sense of identity. Having their sense of knowing who they are as an individual. And you do not have the time you're not obligated to respond just because someone wants you to respond no you don't have to you can just simply say it is my choice whether i support trump whether i support conservative whether i support jeremy corbyn whether i support tony blair it is an individual choice right now you can go and i want to explain i'm going to to a b and c and d but you also have the choice as to say it is my choice. Simple as that. And you don't have to have any fears or no qualms about it because it is your life. Okay? Persons now have got to recognize that with the whole sphere of politics and what you have seen now, the whole tactical voting, right? It's so funny, even with this election, many people are talking about let's create this whole thing with tactical voting. Gina Miller creating this website about tactical voting. Um, the Green Party, they stand down for tactical voting. The Lib Dems said, we will not stand there for tactical voting. And it seems it was tactical voting by the voters who created this landslide. They recognize that they don't like a particular way how the country is going. So they decided, okay, if this is tactical voting, let me do tactical voting. I vote conservative this time to get this Brexit done. So people decided to actually vote accordingly. So, so, and it's interesting how when they say we want a people's vote, and the people's vote came and cleared the house out. The night before the election, when the when the when the the polls were actually saying it's going to be a hung parliament, people were saying it's going to be close. Ellen Prezzo, you, you saw me when I wrote that thing saying, I believe deep in my heart that it's going to be a, a landslide. And, pe and, and, and people say, oh, you're, you're crazy, man. I said, I know it doesn't make sense. I know it actually doesn't follow the polls. But I said, God, come on. We cannot go back to going around in circles again with the Hong Parliament. It would be crazy and it would be ridiculous. Right? And, 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 and by virtue of such, if that happens... I was going to say, this is what I was going to say. I don't care if it is Brexit or no Brexit, whatever. Let's just shut this thing down. We can't keep going around in circles. So I was amazed when the exit polls came. It's similar to what happened with David Cameron when the exit polls came. They were expecting worse or not that much. But exit polls showed and he got a very good seat with Theresa May lost. And when I saw what Boris Johnson got, it warmed my heart because I said, Yes, not because he won, but because I saw a light now at the end of the tunnel that's saying we can get Brexit done. I know it sounds like a, a rhetorical and a broken tape recorder keeps saying, let's get Brexit done. But that's it. And let's get Brexit done doesn't mean to say it's going to be done uh, by January 31st. But the process is in motion now where the Prime Minister's got this majority where he can move very effectively. And one thing which I wanted to address as well. And, I, and I've, I've addressed this uh, at different times. I've addressed it over the years. And that was when, uh, it happened when Trump, when Trump won, when lots of persons were saying that they're going to leave the United States, Whippy Goldberg and lots of persons, Tom Hanks, all of them, we're going to leave the US, UK, USA if, if, if Trump won. And he won. They're still there. And I'm hearing the same things around because Boris Johnson won. We're going to leave. Um, things are going to get worse, blah, blah, blah. And I said, perish the thought to think like that well you can think like that because i'm the one who's saying you, 
you, you can't tell me how to think or what to do. So yes, you can think like that. But I say, perish your thought to think like that. This is me saying that. Because guess what? Hope, right? And belief in yourself is fundamental. I always say this. Don't allow a leader or a prime minister or a party to be the end of all, the end all, the be and the end all of your success. And I've been saying this and I'll be saying this more often. Because at the end of the day, one has got to work. Politicians, government, is not supposed to be this big thing that controls people's lives. It's not be something that, 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 that gets into every looking current cranny of life and society. It is supposed to set the mechanism, like an oil mechanism, like the spheres of influence, if that's a good way of saying it. A, a sphere of influence whereby you operate within. We've got to work. We've got to work. We've got to work to, and, and have a vision for our life, just like the government have a vision for the nation, where everything falls within. So I'm not surprised that the Prime Minister has wanted to ring fence funds for the NHS and get it enshrined in law. I'm not surprised the Prime Minister is actually saying he's going to give back um, bursary, I think 6000 or 8000 to nurses. Okay, that was done before and, and, and uh, it was pulled back and, and he's giving it back. I'm not surprised. Why? Because of all the different talk about saying that it is for sale. They're going to sell it to Boris, sell it to Trump and he's going to sell it. I keep saying this all the while again. Don't let Trump be seen as a face of America because Trump can go tomorrow. Even if he doesn't go next year, but to impeach, he won't be impeached. But I mean, he will be impeached, but he, he won't go because the Senate will not vote and get him out. I mean, I've been watching the whole thing today and, uh, and it's just crazy. But he won't go. But he's going to go at least in the next four years. So therefore, one should not see America as Trump. One should not just see Boris Johnson as the UK. Because there are systems in place that ensure that things flow. But you've got to work. I've got to work. We've got to ensure that we've got a vision for our life. And, 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 um, and, and not allowing, and this is what I'm saying, not allowing, um, what should I say, the, 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 the system... To, to control one so much whereby one is constrained and one is believing that oh my life is done you know so what so what Boris Johnson won so what the conservative won right and I'm not going to get involved in the Labour Party and their rainbow role because um, you know they, they've got to sort out themselves right and everybody knows that I'm conservative um, you know and, and the question again I can't believe this guy is conservative. He was a, how can you, a man from Otrius, Jamaica, and, and be involved in, in a racist party? How can you um, do that? Are you a, a traitor to the cause? But guess what? Sadi Khan is the mayor of London. Yeah. Priti Patel is the home secretary. Saji Javid is the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Shinai, forget what his name is. I think he's, he's a secretary to the treasurer or something like that. Key persons from the black and minority ethnic are positioned in strategic position. Pakistani, Asians, Indians, from different facets of society. Same race, but positioned strategically. So I say to black people, and I say to my people, you've got to position yourself strategically and don't see what is happening now as coming against you, but look as way how you can get in there and be a part of the solution. So the election is over. The Queen's speech is going to be tomorrow. I'm going to get Brexit done by January the 31st. And that doesn't mean to say it's done, but I mean the process is in place so everybody can keep going. And... Um, that there have been some appointments. I know people are sort of questioning and putting some questions aside about why has Nikki Morgan become gone to the House of Lords and keep her job? Why is Zach Goldsmith, who lost his seat, has also um, gone to the Lord in order to keep him there? And yet you have 360 or 380, whatever 
um, members of parliament, some people are saying that's cronism, but anyway, at the end of the day, that is politics, because guess what, it happens, just like Lord Mandelson and all those sort of things. But this is an opportune time for persons now to consider joining political parties. This is an opportune time for persons to con consider taking the invitation and joining the Labour Party, as they say, to vote the leadership. Invitation to join the Conservative Party as well. James Cleverly, good friend of mine, who is, a, who is the chairman of the Conservative Party, is inviting persons to be a part of the Conservative Party. I've had a few persons just before the election join the Conservative Party. Black people, young people, young men, young men, joining in jobs, right? Positioning ourselves strategically, preparing ourselves in order to have a voice in keeping the government accountable. Because the government, just because it's got the, the, the majority now, that doesn't mean to say it's unaccountable. That doesn't mean to say that they can do whatever they want to do. Because the people also, remember what the people have done? The people have loaned their votes, given over their mandate, right? The power of the people has been given to the members of parliament, okay? And the prime minister also recognized that many people who voted for him and voted on these seats, which has never been voted before and never been conservative before, it was loaned to the conservative, loaned to the prime minister in order to deliver Brexit and to sort out the country because what it needed is strong leadership. And I believe there's going to be strong leadership in, 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 in Boris Johnson. But the way how we can play a part, I can play a part within my circles as a member of the Conservative Party with the access that I have. But everybody else have this other access. Whether you voted for an MP or not, and he's your MP, you have the right, being the fact that you live in a particular constituency, to approach your MP and say to him, I've got concerns about um, employment. I've got concern about immigration. I've got concern about tax. And you put that pressure on the person, and therefore you actually get them to say it in Parliament. If you remember, when 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 Jeremy Corbyn started, Jeremy Corbyn always says this, and he always brings these letters, and he said, "I've got this letter from Mary Jane, and Mary Jane is actually saying that um, blah blah blah." And people used to laugh at him first, but he said, "Yeah, you may laugh, but Mary Jane is a real person, and and she's got these issues whereby she have got no gas, she's got no light because of universal credit, and blah blah way way way, and and by that, it, it it gets the ball in motion. So we have that access." Not just when an election time come to be challenging your MP, challenging the Prime Minister, writing to the Prime Minister, doing radio program, doing like what I'm doing now, right? So just because it got the majority, that doesn't mean to say that's the end and be all, okay? There's more to it. So, yes, I'm happy. Yes, I'm more happy that it is over. I'm more happy that there's now a light at the end of the tunnel. I'm not just happy because it's a conservative um, win. We're more happy that we are seeing things going. The, the pound went up, but I think it dipped slightly because they said the Prime Minister maybe is putting back no deal on the table. Personally, I hope not. I hope that somehow the deal which is there can be dealt with and maybe can be tweaked a bit, but to go with a deal, not the no deal. Uh, that's me personally speaking. But the, the government will know best what to do, okay? So, yeah. So, I'd love to hear your views on that. Um, please... Um, if you're there, please let me hear your views in, in regards to that, especially about, you know, voting um, conservative or labor, why you should or why you should not. And um, do you think it's anybody's business or do you think it is people's business or do you think that black people should line up and line up and get newbie and labor police to really say this is how you should or it's nobody's business? Right? Is it nobody's business? Personally speaking, I think it's nobody's business. As to who you vote for, who I vote for, it's my choice, right? And you do not have to explain anything. However, if you want to do a teaching moment and you want to do some discussion, I like that. I rather the discussion where someone invite me, but not to challenge me. How dare you? Because that's not their right. Okay, their name is not on your birth certificate or so. Not your mother, not your father, not your sister, not your brother, not your wife, not your children. Okay, that's it there. Now. I just moving across simply quickly over to the United States of America and in the United States of America what you're seeing happening now is the 
potential impeachment of Donald Trump. I think this was on the cards from the day one that election they've been wanting to impeach him. Before anything happened, they've been wanting to impeach Donald Trump. So this is no surprise, you know. I, I've been in the in the Trump camp for a while, and uh, many people also say, "How oh, dare you?" and blah blah blah. I've lost friends, people unfriend you, people even unfamily me. I've been on 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 family, on family. But that's the whole point. You, you can't really let these things bother you. You've got to be strong. You've got to be rocky. You've got to know who you are. You don't have to love someone to 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 uh, to like policies. You don't have to um, acknowledge or take in the words that they speak. It's policies. Politics, yes, is about personality, but it's also about policies. Policies is the key thing in 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 politics, not just about personalities and charisma and who wrong and who right. You know, the other day I, I challenged someone who said to me, "How can you um, speak well of Trump in a particular way or support Trump?" And I said to the person, the "Person was saying he lies and he do all those things." I said, "I said to the person this." And I know it's controversial. I said to the person, that, well, I tell you what, if you can actually send me a dossier of all the lies that you have told, of all the bad things that you have done over your life, then I believe that we can have a discussion because you're making it look as if that you're perfect. First of all, well, I'm not in policies. I'm not in politics. I'm not a public figure. I said, well, right now you're a public figure because we're discussing this publicly. Right, so therefore, I said, you will sin, cast the first stone. No leaders are perfect. No leader is perfect. And that is something that we all need to know. No leader is perfect. Leaders are frailties. I'm not defending anybody now. No, no leader is perfect. Tell me if you know a perfect leader. Because if that's the case, that's only Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Okay? And he took on all the sins of this world, if anything, to become imperfect again. In order to make things better. Okay? So, so it's interesting watching the the um <clears throat> the debate and, and it's a very interesting debate because you can hear passion from persons lots of persons outside they're demonstrating not here and uh and when i said that i post something and say well if it was up to me i would vote against the two articles of impeachment and one person said why and and you know and i said i don't have to answer i just said that and that's my choice and then someone said well, stay over there with the queen. And I said, okay, all right. That's their choice. So therefore, what I'm trying to say right now is it's very toxic in America. And I believe, I think, I believe America need a Brexit moment. And when I say a Brexit moment, need a breakthrough whereby they can move forward. Because I believe America is going around in circles. This is just my view. It's going around in circles because they have not accepted Trump. Some have accepted Trump. So it's a 50-50 thing right down the middle. And because of that, people are not, they're not moving forward. They, they have not accepted the fact that Hillary Clinton lost. And therefore, there's this point whereby everybody's looking away to get Donald Trump down. Right? The, the, the employment is up. And, um, you know, black people, I understand. I understand. This is me saying, you know, understand is in, is in good employment. People are saying, well, that actually started from Barack Obama. So let's start from Barack Obama. What doesn't care? It's up. Stock market is great. Economy is booming. But the personality is warp. But whose personality is not warp? You know. Now I don't have the facts about this whole thing which happened with Ukraine, and I'm not going to get into that. You know. But but when when we, when one listen to it objectively, and I'm saying objectively now, objectively, one can look at it and see that it's a witch hunt at the same time because everyone knows that. America, from day one, or the Democrats, have always been trying to get at Donald Trump. They do the Russian bits, the, the different gates, Russian gate, um, Mount Gate, and all those sort of things, trying to get at him. All right? And it's like a guy just keep going and just keep going. So it's very interesting to see what will happen in a couple of days. Um, and I believe more than likely the, the Democrats will, the, the House will vote for him to be impeached, and then they go have a trial and everything like that. But you know what? Guys, I'm going to say this sometime, but who cares, really? And we've got to move on. And that's why I believe America needs a Brexit moment. And that Brexit moment whereby you either can, you either sick and tired of being sick and tired, and you're going to remain, 
or you're going to exit. Or I said Brexit. And it is similar to a situation if one is in financially. It is in a situation if one is in a position whereby they're depressed and oppressed. And one can choose to remain as to where you are. Okay, I might be using the Brexit scenario here. One can choose to remain in the comfort zone. One can choose to remain in the position that you're in where you're wallowing, going around in circles. Or one can Brexit. Figuratively, I'm speaking. Rather, exit from the situation. Exit from the position that one is in. That is crucial. That one has got to exit. Because when you're in the same zone, Maybe I should preach now or whatever, motivational. When you're in the same zone, what happens is this. You're within that comfort zone. You're on the shores. You're jumping on the sand. You're not touching the deep. You might just put your feet out there and walk a bit in the water. And you see a little fish running around your feet there. Aren't you asking yourself the question, where is that small fish coming from? It must be. And you see, he runs out there. He doesn't go to the shore, the fish. The fish goes out. Where is he going? He's going into the deep. That's where greater things happening. So you can either stay in the safety of the shores on the comfort zone, jumping on the sand, getting splashed up on your belly, and splat. Or you can go into the deep. And I've always said this, deep call it unto deep. It's scriptural, biblical. At the same time, you go all the way out. And then when you go into the deep, guess what you're going to see? Wow. Look around you. And just picture yourself. If anyone, if you were died before you go into a boat or something like that, and they go all the way to, into the deep, even on a ship, when you go out in deep, you say, wow, there's so much more. Opportunity galore. Opportunity galore. And such opportunity you got new levels. And when you got new levels, you got new devils. And the attitude that one has at this time, the attitude even with the Brexit, the attitude even with what is happening in the UK, the attitude will fundamentally determine one's altitude. I consider myself super positive. You know, someone will say, I'm super excited. I don't say super excited. I don't say these sort of words. I'm, I'm super excited. But I say I'm super positive. You know, I'm positively positive. Right? And 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 I always say, whatever comes, you see, and I can only speak for myself. I can speak for a couple other persons as well. That when you come from Jamaica, when you come from an, a, another nation, another country, you come with an immigrant mentality. And that immigrant mentality is that you don't sometimes don't have the time to get into civilian matters. Because you're operating like a soldier. You're, you're passing through. You, you come to take over. And take over is not the sense that you're coming to take over everything. What you're doing, you're, you, you come with a mission to be successful. Successful at the same time is relative and it's subjective. Right? I can say I'm on, on the top of my game. But at the same time, I'm, you know, with, with I Boomerang, or a company which I started, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, not, I'm not at the top of the game. Legally, um, in, in, in my sphere of work, yeah, it could be classified as the top of my game. But in another thing, I could be at the, the lower level of the game. But that is still being successful. So therefore, one has got to determine what is the key ingredient that will make a person move forward and to be successful. It's so funny how I, how I started off with um, the politics but reach this point. And it's always reach this point because I believe that anything has got to do a lot with the individual. Politics set the framework, politics set the scene, politics and, and government set the, 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 a level of momentum. But they cannot move you. You've got to move yourself. Right? You've got to move yourself and go on to the next level. And that's the message. That's the message that I, that's the message which I which I really want to share tonight, ladies and gentlemen, right? And I'll be coming on um, more and more, you know, talking about the same sort of um, issues here. 
dealing with the politics at the same time but at the same time why i'm dealing with the politics looking at the the the, the reality aspect of things okay so i want to thank you so much for coming on and uh i hope this was um empowering if anything remember my tagline you can vote for whoever you want and if there's somebody here the black person who's a conservative and sometimes afraid to say it because sometimes you get shut down or attacked come speak to me i'll give you some tips how to deal with it but the best way the best way to deal with things when you believe in something and people are challenging you and you don't really want to talk about it just simply say it is my choice and i made it and i have not i do not have to explain myself to anyone okay and to free you because i never forget a lady said to me one time she's a mentor meant a little mentor a good mentor lady you know and i said to her somebody said to me one day and she, and i said to her it really dig me and it really annoyed me so much and i as she said and i said it like it went in deep and she never had a go at the person right she had a go at me she said this i blame you silver i blame you how come you allow that person to get so close and so deep i blame you silver right so therefore you've got to guard the entrance of things into your spirit you've got to guard the entrance of things into your eyes you've got to guard the entrance of things to your ears right you've got to guard what you engage with you don't have to and finally as i say all the while facebook is a tool just because you're on facebook and somebody won't engage you right away you don't have to you choose when to use the tools that we have government is a tool social media is a tool don't let it consume you and take control of you okay so well, thank you again guys and um have a wonderful evening and um well i'm back on the track jack now election is over so i'll be doing more live now um at this a nightly time of 10 o'clock i'll be looking forward to interviewing a couple of the persons from the global diaspora as i mentioned earlier um congratulations to to them who actually won recently and um the persons for the uk as i said is kevin brown from the the uk north and nathaniel peat so i'll be doing some interviews with them to ask what they're doing and i'm also maybe tapping to some of the guys in the states as well as to the global jamaica diaspora council and also congratulations again to tony and singh who won miss world congratulations also to the miss universe as well jamaica miss universe she didn't win miss universe um and congratulations as well to miss nigeria and ladies and gentlemen try and be a miss nigeria someone who will support others yeah be a nigeria for others and also by virtue of such you'll be surprised you'll find other miss nigerias around you to support you let us support each other at this time and big up each other there's always something in somebody that you can find I always say there's a common element there's a denominator whereby you'd be surprised how you can support someone and anyone okay so thank you very much and um have a have a good evening thank you for for joining um pastor era william norbert teddy and joseph danit gale sir mike ricketts thank you great advice everton grant miranda missy joyce mike ricketts Sean hey Sean and all the persons remember to like share and do not dislike this video and I think I might put it up on YouTube and for Instagram land as well thank you for coming on and uh peace out cheers <laughs>